Warning, what you're about to see won't be easy to watch. In fact, let's call it what it is. It's a hot mess. I tried my best under very trying circumstances to make something that would appeal to the audiences, something current, something now. But what I ended up doing was just making a video that needed massive overworking and editing and might be hard to watch. So now that I've set the tone, Please enjoy this month's Tea With Me. Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Tape & Twine. Thank you so much for joining me today for our April episode of Tea With Me. And uh, welcome. Welcome to all my friends everywhere who I can't see. I normally can't see you because it's a YouTube channel and you're on the other side. But I really can't see you now because I think everywhere in the world we're quarantined. And um, what a strange, strange place to be. So I'm going to start today by, first of all, welcoming all my subscribers and all my regular viewers and say thank you so much for sticking with me and supporting me and um, just... Hope you're doing okay. Hope that you're weathering this weird time okay. It's it's very difficult. It's like on one hand, we've been given the gift of slowing down, and on the other hand, it's not a gift at all. <laughs> so um, it's strange. And I'd also like to thank anybody who's tuning in for the first time. Uh, Tea With Me tends to be a conversation I have once a month with you all that revolves around the world of paper, all things vintage paper, as well as junk journaling and, uh, and mixed media type of uh, craft with ephemera. Um, I try to offer some products. I try to always review a book or two. I try to come up with a craft and I just wanna chat and sort of hang out with you. So if we were hanging out together right now, I would say, how are you? How are you doing? How are you weathering this storm? And of course, I can't hear from you right now, but I hope that you'll tell me how you're doing in the comments or in Instagram um, on my feed, because I really am interested to know how people are doing out there. How am I doing? I'm going to give you the, 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 quick little, um, the quick little brief. I believe my husband and I have had COVID um, right at the beginning before everything was shut down, he had some coworkers at work. There was something at work, a conference, and somebody came in who had been infected and didn't know it at the time, was coughing a lot, and ended up getting a lot of people in the office sick, and my husband being one of them. But we could not get testing here in New Hampshire, so we were never able to get um, def definitive results for ourselves, but I think it's pretty clear we had it. Um, we both had some classic symptoms and my husband still can't taste or smell. So we weathered through it fine. We are on the other side by weeks. We are perfectly healthy um, and hoping that we have some kind of immunity to this moving forward, but we really don't know. And so I am practicing um, safe social distancing, not just for myself, but for everybody. And I hope you all are as well. I, I I'm hearing terrible stories daily about um, people that are healthy and got sick and passed away and it's just just horrifying and terrible and and it's also terrible for all the small business people and companies and people working and we could go down that rabbit hole but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because I think we do places we go to videos and we craft and we do art to get away from that so that's about all I'm going to say about the situation, other than the fact that I am very concerned about everyone out there in, in my community, personally here, and in my uh, book ephemera junk journal community as well. And I hope people are finding ways to stay um, busy. Having said that, I am so, so busy. 
but this you would think would be a time when we would be I would be at least creating and having all these things. The last time I talked to you was at the beginning of all of this craziness. And I made a bunch of videos because I knew that things were closing down and I wouldn't have privacy and be able to make videos, etc. And I never thought that six weeks later, five, six weeks later, we wouldn't even be looking for an end in sight. And I thought five, six weeks later, I'd have a table full of things to show you today that I made. But I don't know about you. I think this affects this type of situation affects everybody differently. And it's affecting me in a way that I just can't seem to get into my studio and create. And part of that is because I have no time to get a chunk of time that I'm not interrupted. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't do a project unless I have like the morning or the afternoon that I can just do something. If I'm going to be interrupted the whole time, I can't even get started. And that's my problem. I also feel like my little nest that I I make my books in that's on the second floor landing it's right between my boys rooms and they're home right now and their stuff is everywhere and there's just no room for me so as the weather gets better hopefully I'll be down here in this in my studio studio more um, it'll be warm enough we've had just such a cold wet spring so far that I haven't even been able to really work down here but it's lovely today and I'm here today in the studio and I'm just hoping that continues because then I'll be able to start creating again if I have space and I have time where I'm not I'm not um, interrupted when I'm at the house my husband's working from home my kids are home everybody's on a different schedule my husband's up at six to go to work and my kids get up between nine and eleven so it's like there's always somebody coming and going and asking me questions and so I've just decided to, to kind of go into work mode and work on the shop. So the last month has been a lot of me trying to get things for the shop and um, working on making fabric bundles and uh, kits and things like that. So hopefully we'll be putting a lot more in our shop because that's something I can do in little pieces every day. I just can't seem to do the creating part, but the creating part is what feeds my soul. So I really need to do that because it really brings me down when I can't. But anyway, that was a really long six minute chat about probably nothing you wanted to hear. So I apologize that for that, but you know, tea with me is a conversation. And you know, if we were together as friends, I'd want to know what's going on in your life and you'd be sharing your your points too. So let's move that out of the way and move forward with a regular show. So today, my tea that I'm having is not something I generally enjoy. I don't usually like mint tea, but I am having um, some Twining's Pure Peppermint. And the reason I'm doing that is because I heard that mint satisfies you when you're hungry and I don't know about you guys, but I'm really struggling with the whole eating thing, um, being stuck inside all the time and not being able to go out. And I love to cook and my oldest son loves to cook. So we're cooking all the time. So right now, um, I've, I'm, Ooh, that's not too bad. Actually. I'm not usually a mint fan, but that's pretty good today. I actually am using my favorite teacup that my son bought me when he was in London traveling abroad. Um, I'm so glad he got to have that experience because um, I know he wouldn't have if it had been this year. So now it, it's even more special. So let's get, let's get moving. You're probably like, come on, Michelle, let's get moving. So let's get moving. So how beautiful is she? My little social distancing person right here. Um, and I bring her, I brought her here today because one of the things I think we're going to be adding to our shop is something that I was able to get my hands on this month, and that is a bunch of 1920s magazines. And when we look at paper crafting, and I love beautiful kits that we can download, um, and I know a lot of people use paper packs, but here's another option I wanted you guys to think about, and that's an old magazine. Because if we're willing to pay 
you know, ten dollars or or how how ten to twenty dollars on a um, beautiful pack of paper that we use in our our, our books and our paper craft and our journals. Why wouldn't we do the same on a magazine? Because when you look at a magazine, a magazine is first of all it's authentic. It's a one of a kind, so it's not like your journal that you or your paper craft that you use a magazine. It's going to look like anybody else's because how many people have May 1927 hanging around? Probably not many. And the artwork is superb, just superb. And I mean, if you felt funny, you know, cutting her, you could always put her on a color um, photocopier and, and then cut her out and use her in your artwork or reduce her and then use her in your artwork but she's just lovely and what I wanted to sort of go over is first of all the size of this is very generous so you know when we're making books if we did a sideways page this would go over both sides so when you're looking for a magazine there's a few things I think I would recommend looking for to use first of all if you think of it as the same investment as let's say, let's say a paper pack, um, when you're looking at a paper pack, you're looking for things that are really striking that give you some, usually the paper pack will include like some little ephemera pieces like journaling cards and tags and things like that, things that you can cut smaller, and then beautiful pieces of paper, some that are very mellow for the background and some that are, are quite ornate that maybe you would use in different ways. So you wanna look at those same qualities when you're looking for a magazine. Now, what I liked about this is, I don't know if you can tell, it's it's flat paper. It's it's not glossy, which is nice because it, oh look, I have a little ladybug. Did you see my little ladybug? That's gotta be good luck. Let's see if she shows up or he shows up on camera again. Um, so what I was saying is flat paper just tends to look nicer in, um, and crafts rather or paper craft or journals rather than like a shiny type of a paper and it's also easier to work with so this is great a great size great artwork and then when you come in you know there's always these beautiful ads which again it might be hard to cut these in some ways but I mean look at some of these tiny pieces on this ad that would be great for artwork look at that a fairy tale for the children isn't that lovely? And then this bonhomie. Oops. I'm losing. Okay. How sweet is that? That could be fussy cut out and used as an embellishment. And then you have like this. This has poetry. This little square here um, would be great just to fold to make into a page. And it's very subtle and black and white. So it could be in the background. Really nice. And then, well, I really love these. So I don't know if anybody's interested or uh, not interested, is familiar with Thornton Burgess. Thornton Burgess wrote children's stories, but from a naturalist point of view. And the, this bunny was, this uh, Peter Rabbit kind of bunny, was really one of his signature guys. And he writes for this magazine. So there's one of these in every one of these magazines. Great imagery right there. Um, but also recommendation to look for his books. Um, if you if you um, if you go to thrift books or start looking for books, look for a Thornton Burgess book. Remember when I said I can't do anything because I get interrupted? Everybody's gone right now. I'm down in my studio. And what just happened? I'm looking out the window of my studio and I see my older rescue dog eating her own poop. It's so disgusting that she does this. She digs for old ones. I mean, we pick them up as fast as we can, but she'll go like under a tree or something. And then it'll become like a petrified treat for her freeze dried to get later. It's so disgusting. And she throws them up later. I mean, I love my dogs. I love my rescues, but man, sometimes. And I, I should be patient because they say she does it because she didn't get enough food when she was a puppy and it was she probably had to eat eat it when she was a puppy in order to stay alive and anyway malnourished dogs do that and they don't grow out of it but it's still disgusting and of course I lost my train of thought I'm telling you peeps I keep it real this show is not like all like 
you know, trying to make it look like my life's great because <laughs> I keep it real, man. All right, moving on. So what I was saying about these magazines and newspapers is um, that they're just got great ads. They got great imagery. There's really nice just text when you just want to use it in the background. Um, and then, you know, there's imagery true too that can really, you know, you could even frame some of these, take away from that. Look at this, look at this laces from sunny Spain. That's super nice. So when you're looking at these, if you buy them online, first of all, you want to make sure it's always from a smoke free home. And that's only because paper absorbs uh, cigarette smoke and you can't get that smell out. So if you're, if you're somebody who's making a journal, you definitely don't, and this is not a, you know, I'm not throwing shade at any of the people out there that smoke. It's just when you're working with um, paper, you don't want to be working with paper that smells like cigarette smoke, especially if you're going to be selling it later. Um, a lot of people have problems with that and you can't get the smell out. It, it it's, it's almost impossible. So you definitely, if you're looking, ask the people online, you know, is it coming from a smoke-free home? Is Does it smell like smoke? And you also want to ask how it smells depending on how it was stored. Um, I think all old paper can sometimes have a little bit of a musty smell depending on where it's stored, but you don't want mold and you definitely don't want a heavy, heavy um, musty smell. You can, you can mitigate the musty smell by um, putting it in, putting, um, baking soda on the paper and then putting it in a closed container for maybe a week or two. But you know, it's better if it doesn't have it in the first place. So, you know, you're looking at these ads and it's just, there's so much here, you know, there's things to fussy cut, there's artwork, there's great little black and white ads, um, just really interesting things to put in, in all variety of subjects too nature babies um there was even a little wild west in there there's cooking there's look at this montgomery ward catalog you know there's always going to be fashion and beautiful ladies in there which i just love look at this free catalog for latest records some cute little baby things going on here um terrific uh baking baking so if you're doing a recipe book or a cookbook what else we have here and then there's always fashion and you know really pretty and interesting fashion things we can't just find anywhere so I just think magazines are such a wonderful uh, resource for so many things graphic black and white pieces these little tiny ads would be great for embellishments um, and you can get magazines. You just you just need to keep your eyes out. And, and, and when you find somebody who knows, you know, that you can trust that they're going to be clean and in good shape, then I would say, you know, go for it. And the thing is, a lot of times people are selling them to collectors, so the price is collector price. So you also want to find a price somewhere around your, you know, what you would pay for a quality paper pack. So... We will start putting some of these in our shop, but I just wanted to sort of show you, give you some ideas of things you should be looking for when you're looking, you know, for a magazine. Now this magazine, as beautiful as it is, would be an example of a magazine you probably don't want to get. You don't want to get something that has water damage. Now the crinkle sounds wonderful, right? but it's all wavy. And what happens if something has some water damage on it, if you can see on the outside there's some water damage, you need to be very careful because if it does have color in it, look at the, 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 the color just kind of, you know, soaks through. And look how beautiful this page would have been if it hadn't been wet. I still may be able to do something with this and I probably will still use this in work it actually smells oh, my door just slammed it, it smells fine and it's in good shape other than the fact that it's completely you know curdled I'm gonna actually try and see if I can iron this it's possible I might be able to iron some of these pages and salvage some of the ads and salvage some of the imagery because um, I had always heard about this so these are a couple of titles you can look up modern Priscilla 
and what the the women's magazines in the 20s you know it was a combination of food housekeeping they always had poetry and stories fiction stories um, and they did have a lot of handiwork like needlework and things like that so people's home journal and modern priscilla are two that you can look up that have the paper feel not so much that shiny shiny magazine feel although it's hard for me to tell what the priscilla this is the first priscilla i've ever found and it's waterlogged but yeah it's pretty it's regular paper from what i see look how cute that is i need to see if i can salvage something from here because there's some really cute stuff in here so magazines, that was my first thing to talk to you about today. So now we're going to do something a little fun, or I think it's going to be fun. I really don't know. So let me take a sip of tea. And grab this beast. All right. So on Facebook in my town, there's a... Uh, a, a free page where people give away things for free and right now since nobody can get to the recycling center or um, get rid of their things on the nice days people are cleaning out their houses and they're putting postings up for hey can anybody use this I have this and, and they leave it curbside on their porch or at the bottom of their driveway and somebody had um, a picture of two little tables with some miscellaneous stuff on it and I could see this in the picture you know eagle eyes Michelle the picture wasn't even about this darn book. It was about something else. But I could see it sitting on the top. And, of course, all I could see was this. And let's face it, that's a hot mess. That is a hot mess of a book. You know, it is so damaged beyond repair. Look how bowed it is. That it's. But I was curious, and I knew it was old. So I said, hey, that book on the table, is that available for free? And she said, oh, yeah, I'm getting rid of that and some other old books. And I said, would you mind if I came and get them? And she said, no, that would be fine. So I picked up this book from her, and I haven't opened it yet. just let my dog in. I'll put this stuff here and you can go up on. There you go. Let me get you up. Let me get you up. Oh, there you go. Good girl. Good girl. Stay down. Okay, so this beast I picked up, and this is one of those books where I think I can salvage everything. Uh, I don't know that I can salvage this, but I don't know what's inside. And I didn't want to open it and, until I got home, and I thought, you know what? I was planning on doing a video today. Let's open it together. First of all, this cover, if this was in good shape, can you see how incredible this cover is? I wish I could. I'm going to have to turn it because my... Uh, my my uh, tripod's right there, so it's gonna. It's it is it's a savage cover, but it is fascinating. It's depicting like a tribal person killing a rhinoceros, but there's a elephant here, and then an ape killing an ape bite a chimpanzee biting into what looks like some kind of panther or something and then there's a snake wow oh my gosh can you see that <gasps> wow i don't know what i i wish i could salvage i'm gonna have to try to salvage this look at this paper look at that image there can you see it that's amazing so this says um clarence Bernie, maybe Cote, Cote, I don't know, from Sarah, December 25th, 1893. So yes, we're, we're talking, you know, a 130-year-old book here. Wow. Look at that. I think I can salvage this. I mean, it does have a lot of foxing. 
but look at the color on that. Now, the woman told me the reason this book looks like this is she, she got it, she salvaged it from a fire. So what I think happened was some, um, maybe she had a house fire or a family member had a house fire and I don't think this was damaged by the fire. I think this was damaged by the water. I think maybe there, there was like a fire truck or something and everything got really wet. Um, because this looks to me more like it got just so soaking wet and then it, as it dried, there's no smell at all as far as like a fire smell. So I think this was just water damage. So, um, you know, maybe I can salvage some of it. That is just such an incredible, incredible, I think I need to frame that. And this says, copyrighted 1889 by H.S. Smith. So we can look up later, uh, The Savage World by, uh, I guess it doesn't have an author, just look up 1889 H.S. Smith. And it says this, the illustrations in this work are from original drawings and protected by copyright. Their reproduction in any form is unlawful. Hmm. So, obviously this is a natural history book. Wow. And there's black and white images that are incredible. Look at this, boy fatally bitten by shark. You see that? That's, that's pretty, that's pretty good. So these are all sharks. And fish. So this is fishes, right? I was hoping for more of those color prints, but I will say these these black and whites are pretty stupendous. Now I don't think I'm gonna. There's obviously I cannot salvage this this book, but I think I can carefully remove a lot of these pages. I can try to iron them and take out as much. See the center pages aren't bad, and then I might be able to. Um, use those pages or even share the, these pages with you guys look at these fraud uh, the, the, the drawings are incredible i have to believe that if this book was in good shape it, it would be worth a ton i mean it's not in good shape as you can see oh look at the frogs but these some of these images are just stupendous i was really hoping for a few more of those color plates we got into turtles. Insects. Oh, look at the butterflies. Interesting. Butterflies and moths. Now we're into birds. So we have black and white bird plates. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I see why she saved it, even though it was damaged, because it, it's just a, an incredible book. Even in the shape it is in, it would definitely be worth something. And, and I just, I am definitely going to be taking out the work, the pages that I can and, and salvaging what I can from it. The black engravings are just, oh, look at that owl. Oh, something was in here. Some kind of silver leaf something. That's, I don't know what was in that. It would have been neat to find something cool in this press between the pages. Mice. The words are really big too, which is, is nice as well. Now we're getting to bigger animals, a lot of hunting, showing hunting. What is that? An African saga. I wonder if um, some of these animals are probably extinct now. Wow, look at that. So, very cool book. Look at those leopards. Wow. That's 
so cool. Incredible. Monkeys, primates. Mm, that baboon. This is a giant book. I'm on page 700. I have to look this book up later. I will definitely be looking it up later. And then nothing on the back here, just that another wonderful image. But yeah, you can see, I don't know if you can see how bad this is, the damage is there. That's, that's, that's pretty gnarly, man. Oh, look at that. So yes, and this was like a linen covered book. Oh, look at the, look at, oh, I hadn't even looked at that. Look at that spine. Oh my gosh, that spine. And it has um, two natives with, a, a, you know, I'm guessing a lioness maybe, or a cougar and a baby in its mouth. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. So sometimes, you know, you get the, the greatest things. And I also got a few other things from her. I got, she's like, you don't like playing cards, do you? And I was like, oh my gosh, look at that. I love the kitschiness of um, the Whitman card games. If you guys aren't familiar with them, Whitman card games have just phenomenal graphics and they're very kitschy and they can, mid century, 1960s too, like a zippy zebra, adorable. So I would probably, in my tea with me show you something I've made this month but since like I told you we haven't I haven't made anything um let's talk some shop so I'm going to put this down because the background is so busy that I think when I put the next thing down it's probably going to make your eyes go nutty so as many of you know tape and twine is my Instagram feed tape and then the letter n twine like tape and twine and then I have a business with my friend Diane that's that's um, a business of vintage paper and textiles and things like that. So we've been working a lot this month on procuring some really interesting things for the shop. And I wanted to show you a few things. And then I also want to pass by an idea that we had and see what you guys think of it. So... We had the opportunity to buy a massive lot of labels from somebody um, local, and I just fell in love with them because they're so graphic and they're so interesting. They're all like from the 40s, 30s and the 40s. We think mostly the 40s. And we're going to be selling these in our shop starting, well, when you see this video, they're probably already going to be in our shop. And I wanted to, I don't know how familiar, you guys are probably familiar with labels. I hadn't really thought much about labels before. Um, I have a, a guy that does finds a lot of cool things for me. And he was the one who showed them to me. And I hadn't really thought about labels before. I knew people collected the bigger ones, like, let me see, like this one. And they would frame it and maybe use it as part of their kitchen or whatever they'd frame it and make it into artwork that totally made sense to me and of course people collect everything so i knew people collected labels but i didn't think of labels in terms of um junk journals or or you know home decor any of that before i really looked at them and bought them and then i started looking at them and i'm like you know this kind of looks like a book cover like if you are making a small journal and you put this on like chipboard, wouldn't that be kind of a cool like little cover for a, for a little mini journal? I think that would be really cool. And the thing is, some of these um, labels have space for like a binding. Like for instance, this one, right? You could have a fold here and a fold here and then this right here could be big enough for a binding so it's it kind of is interesting it can also be a page in your book you could make pockets out of them you could you could do all sorts of things with them but then then I started to really look at them and think wow there's a lot more that they could do if, if you're in you know Right now it's almost summertime. I'm getting ready for my vegetable garden. I'm decorating my house a little bit more summery. 
and I thought, how cute would it be just to take, you know, an old tin can, not an old tin can, this is a tin can from this week, you know, I had beans or something, and that's what these are, are our, 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 our labels, and by just putting that back on a can, but it's 1940s vintage, you could then plant a plant in there. <laughs> Okay, and now I have to interrupt this video so I can show you the project that I'm discussing, but I didn't have it ready in time, and I apologize for that. So we're just gonna take some of these cool vintage labels and we're gonna combine them with cans from maybe things you've eaten this week that you rinse out and make cute little planters. So all you'll do is take the cans and you'll take a nail and pop some holes in the bottom for drainage add some stones in the bottom inch of the can for drainage as well, and then walk around your yard and look for pretty little flowers and plants that you can plant inside these cans. And they look adorable on a shelf or a front porch um, because they have that vintage feel. Um, and they literally cost pennies. And now I'm going to throw up a few slides um, of some pictures that are not mine. I found them on Pinterest by simply searching DIY decor vintage labels or vintage label projects. And there's some really cute ideas out there. So go on Pinterest and um, enjoy these slides, which again are not mine. I just wanted to show them to you because they're so vibrant. There's some of them that have like embossing, raised the raised embossing and the gilding, and they're just really beautiful and beautiful um, sort of matte paper. And then, and like, look how great the graphic is on that. If you had a gardening journal or just a summer journal, or you wanted to keep track of what you were growing in your garden. These are just terrific. So we're gonna be dividing these up into lots and those will be in our store. And then we also have, and I wish I had some with me right now, um, but they're all at Diane's. We got a big load of vintage bottle caps that are very graphic. And here we go again with some embedded slides. I wanted to show you the milk caps. So here are some pictures of them that will be going up in the shop. So I'm using the shop photos, which would also include um, some deli paper that um, was for butter and labels, all really cute and vintage, as well as some uh, dairy receipts. Everything here is, I believe, from like the 1940s and 50s. So let's get back to the show. And, th and those will be sold with these little um, vintage beef suet packages, which would make a great little um, pocket or even a great little journal. Look at this, if we cut this box, look at that could be the, the binding and that could be the front. That would be a great little fun little uh, thing, fun little book. But, so let's see the size. I mean, this would be a tiny size, but would that be a cute little book? And then you can also use it as a pocket or you could um, actually make it into a little box and put it up on your counter and just decorate with it, which is really cute. So they'll have some of those milk, um, milk caps with the boxes in the store as well. And if I can get my act together and make something with them, I will post what I make. Okay, so now you've sort of seen me show off some things coming in the shop some uh, labels and some milk caps and I've dropped in higgly piggly some slides and I've gotten off my duff and said enough is enough. I need to make something to sort of show how you can use these things and I'm adding that in right now. So I made this little 
paper bag journal folio thing. And let me tell you, this is the first one I made. I've been jonesing to do this for so long, so this was a great excuse for me to do it. And what I tried to use was as many of the materials that I just discussed, um, labels, milk caps, and then um, some of the ephemera that you can use that comes in the packaging, which you'll see in a minute. So basically all I used for this was a simple blue craft sack. Um, you can get them at, you know, hobby stores or whatever. This one's blue. That's why I know it came from the hobby store. But honestly, you could use any kind of lunch sack or paper bag. It does not have to be. I just wanted it to be blue because I had found some denim uh, some paperback denim and I wanted to use that so I used this I used some craft paper brown craft paper I used um, one not even this is what's left uh, one less than a sheet of scrapbook paper in this sort of country fun bandana print uh, these little vintage envelopes which you can get for coins or seeds and some burlap. I think what this was was a big roll of big burlap ribbon that I used on this project. And here's an example of some of the milk caps that we have. They're, you know, very graphic and fun. Again, these used to be used when you got milk bottles delivered every day. They, they stuck to the top of the milk bottle and then there was like a plastic piece that went over and you could see through the plastic piece because it was just like a, a rim. And, um, they had their advertising on it. People used to collect them, but these are new old stock, which means they're in great shape and that staple really isn't rusted yet. And um, they're, you know, clean and, and nice. And there's just great little vintage designs and, and things on like that. There's so many things you can do with them. And I will drop a few additional slides from Pinterest in to show you some other ideas that I'm not going to have time to do before this video hits. So basically I took the, uh, the blue paper bag and see I have a closure here with twine and that uh, twine was just sewed onto a little piece of um, that denim and then glued on. And this you can see, hold on, this you can see is the paper bag with some washi tape and that that paperback denim and the scrapbook paper and some burlap and um, a milk cap. This whole project took me like maybe two hours tops. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I just kind of put everything I had in front of me and just kind of went for it. You know, is it perfect? No, but I wanted that sort of homespun cute quality to it. So basically I took a button and I glued a button on the back of this milk cap and then I glued it on top of the burlap. That way there's a little bit of space there so that when you tie the twine, it goes easily. See that? And then you open it up and inside is um, a little pocket. I, I put that coin envelope down and you can put things inside that envelope. I, see, And I just added some embellishment onto it and another little stitched piece of that denim on the paper and a little button that I just glued there. I just thought that was really cute. Plus the button, the weight of the button holds the envelope. Um, on the shut side and all paper one of the great things about paperback paper bag um, folios and journals is that you have these built-in pockets and I made a journaling card with um, another milk cap and some burlap and a piece of um, cardboard really fun and cute and I think very sweet looking Let me move these caps and then I made a tag out of the packaging that you would get in any order um, of these labels or things like that. And later on in the video, I talk about that. So stay tuned so that you can hear about what we're doing with our packaging, which I think is kind of fun. So this, I made a little tag, just put it on craft paper and did a little stitching. But again, you don't have to do the stitching. Um, poor Julia, I put some stuff coming out of her head, but you know, what are you going to do? It looks like she's got a fancy hat on. And then there's this little pocket so you could put other things in it. And then I took some simple um, 
paper from like school paper that half of it was writing and half of it was blank and folded it and just sewed down the middle and you get this great little pad just some handy little pad in the middle and again this is a part of this packaging that you'll hear about a little later on in the video and I just put it in the middle and with and sewed on a little bit of that denim it makes a great little flap for this blue pencil and can keep um, something to write with right there so let's say this was my little oops garden journal I could plan my garden and write the seeds I want take it to the garden center make some notes or whatever or even if I was just making notes about my garden that year there's some blank paper for me to do some drawings and then in the back here I have these three pockets that I made um, again simply by that end of the bag is right here and you just cut slice this here and then you have a pocket already made and then I just put two stacked pieces of paper that I sewed and I have basically three pockets that way you know that's what's so cool about paper bag journals and folios so in here I took one of our labels and I made just a little notebook I just took some of that um, that denim paper again and I just did a little sewing again you don't need to do this I just like the look of it I backed our label with a little bit of, of, of craft paper just so that it's a little bit sturdier and use some washi tape and then I use some old ledger paper just to make this little notebook and you know you could just take this stick it in your pocket take some notes at the garden center how much seeds will cost or or things like that and that slips in this pocket here and then I just you know put a couple little things in here just so that they went in there but think about if you ordered the dairy pack, you could put like the receipts in there. There's another cow label. You know, there's just little bits and pieces that, that go with it. So there's these three pockets. So this little project, you know, uses the milk caps. It uses the labels. And again, you don't need to buy from us. You can buy from anybody. But I just because we have them available, wanted to do this little project and show you. Um, I like to make sure that if I'm showing you something, I have the materials available, but you may have these av materials available to you anyway. So that's the beauty of junk journaling and recycling things. You may already have a lot of this stuff. So this cute little project didn't take that long and I used two bottle caps and one label and some of the packaging that comes with it. So it's easy peasy. Um, so now let me end this little segment with a few slides of other things you can do with milk, milk caps, just because these are not my pictures, these are from Pinterest. Um, so you can go on and search milk cap DIY or milk cap crafts and you'll see tons of ideas. Came up with this idea because we had the opportunity to buy a massive roll of old bread wrappers like so it's on one huge roll and we thought when we first opened the business if you bought from us what you notice is we always try to package our pack our packages really cute and individual and we will still package our our upcoming orders cute but we need to start um, looking at the amount of time we're taking when we package because uh, it takes so much time to do that end of the job that um, we need to stream like that a little bit so what we did is we invested in a large amount of ephemera that we're going to use as packaging material that way when you get your package it's like getting another little gift it's like getting a little freebie because then you can use the packaging material in your crafts so rather than us trying to figure out what we're going to throw in for a freebie every time we get an order we decided to take that money and invest in really quality packing materials that really aren't intended for packing but we're going to use them for packing and then you can use them once you get it and I want to know what you think of that idea so this is what we decided 
if you buy something from us that obviously is going to be wrapped in some way, we always try to wrap everything, um, if it's from like the 1800s to maybe Victorian time, 1920s, we're going to use this paper, which is from 1908. It's from an Anthony, I never say this right, Anthony M. Um, newspaper. This newspaper is like in pristine condition because it came from um, a library and they were in these big bound volumes. But what's really great is it's, I think from, I don't know if it's from London, but the, first of all, you can feel the print. You can feel it. It's so amazing. You can actually feel each letter. The, the fonts are interesting. The words are interesting. This one is from um, October of 1908. There's great numbers. There's great words. Oh, look at Faust. Diane Faust. That's my partner. Anyway, sh um, we are going to wrap anything that's from that time period in this paper. Now, if you buy something that's more mid-century, let's say from the 30s all the way up till, you know, most of everything, the oldest that we probably will have in our shop is 70s. So if you buy something that's more modern, we will wrap it in this, um, it's like a waxed deli paper. It was made for bread. So when you get your sandwich bread, you're like wonder bread, you got it in this these long strips and they would wrap the bread. I don't know if it was wrapped this, I probably was wrapped this way. I don't know, it's a pretty, oh, I guess, remember how square the, the white bread was? I don't know, maybe they did a front and bottle and, and sealed it. But we're gonna wrap it in this. So it's very graphic, we love the crinkle and the way it felt. So this way, um, based on the what you bought, Whichever fits better with it is one of these things that we'll use. So tell us what you think about that. Do you like that idea? Would that make you happy every time you ordered to get like, you know, something very old that then you could use in your work? Um, I think it would be kind of cool. So that's kind of what we did. And that, my friends, is the April edition of Tea With Me. It only took two sessions over three days and a big, cold, wintry storm in between to finish we got it done. If you're still with me right now, you're either super persistent, super interested, or very bored. I'm going to hope that it's not the very bored one, but if it is, I'm still grateful you're here. So everyone, May is just around the corner. I will be back in May, hopefully with better weather, better news, and hopefully an end to all this um, pandemic stuff in sight. That would be, you know, fingers crossed. If you have any comments, uh, questions, anything you want to share with me, just want to check in, please leave um, a message in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. I'd love if you followed me on Tape and Twine on my Instagram feed. Um, you'll get more of an inside look of what's going on behind the scenes with me or behind the scenes in my shop, depending on which feed you um, decide to, to follow, if you follow me at all. Thank you again. Be safe, be well, and I'll talk to you soon.